Welcome to That's How We Do. Today's video is brought to you with the support of UKSL MacLab. And we're going to be showing you how we upgrade the A14-19 27-inch iMac with a one terabyte, three and a half inch hard disk to a PCI 500 gigabyte SSD. We will do this by removing the logic board and connecting the SSD to the NVMe socket. Before we strip down the iMac, let's have a look at the specification. So it currently has a four gigabyte memory. And the storage capacity is currently one terabyte with a SATA three and a half inch hard disk. So to test out the speed, we're gonna use this Black Magic app. And this allows us to check the write speed and also the read speed. So as you see, we've clicked the start speed test. And on the left hand side, the write speed has gone up to around about 180 MB per second. Now we would do the read speed. And as you can see, that's gone up to also around about 180, 182 MB per second also. So the Blackmagic app is telling us that the speed of this current hard drive is running at 182, at 184 on the write speed and 182, 83 on the read speed also. We're gonna be using this glass clamp to secure the screen. Uh, this will help us to lift the screen once we've actually removed the adhesive seal. And we're gonna use this special tool here and we're going to use this to work our way around the edge of the screen to break the adhesive seal. Once we've broken the adhesive seal, we'll be able to lift up the screen uh, and there's another seal actually at the bottom of the screen also. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to raise the screen up and then remove the adhesive seal strip from the inside of the screen. So let's get started. First things first, we'll secure the clamp and make sure it's firmly in place with the screen. Then we'll just spray a little bit of alcohol on our special tool. This just makes it a little bit easier for us to work our way around the edge of the screen. And then we'll gradually start rolling our tool up and down where the seal is. And gradually, as you work your way up and down the edge of the screen, the adhesive will start to split and you'll just keep rolling up and down in a gentle motion. We're just gonna apply a little bit more alcohol to the tool just to make it easier for us to continue breaking the adhesive seal. Now, as you can see, once I've initially broken the seal, it becomes easier to work the tool further in underneath the screen. And you'll see in the corner of this particular screen, there's a little chip. Now, experience has shown us that whenever you take off a screen, if there is a chip or a crack in it, there's a very, very strong likelihood that the screen will crack further. So this is something that you should consider very wisely before attempting to remove any screen.
From time to time, you'll see that we spray a little bit more alcohol on this special tool. And we do this just to make it a little bit easier for us to break the adhesive on the seal. As you can see, we've worked our way around the screen a number of times and the seal has started to relax with the adhesive being broken. And you can see just in the corner there, it's starting to raise up a little bit. And if we apply a little pressure and lift up the clamp as we're removing the adhesive, you'll see that the screen will start to come up. There we go, just like that. Now remember the screen is still attached to the screen connectors, so we just have to disconnect those to enable us to fully open the screen. There we go. Now, at the bottom of the screen, there is still another seal. So we have to remove this seal before we can actually completely take off the screen. So we're working our way from the left side, as you can see. Now this seal uh, can break, as you can see it has broken there. So we'll go to the right side and start working our way from there. And you just need to take your time with this. Um, it's a, a gentle exercise and just apply pressure to pull the seal from the base of the iMac. Right, so now we can totally remove the screen and we just place that safely to one side and that is the screen removed. So now we've taken off the screen, we can look inside the iMac and we can see we've got the right speaker and the main logic board here, followed by the fan and in the top corner we've got the power supply and the current one terabyte, three and a half inch SATA, followed by the left speaker here. So now the screen is removed, we've got to remove the seal from all the way around the iMac. Now this seal goes all the way around the top end and the side and the bottom of the screen. Uh, so we have to take our time and work our way around removing every single part of this seal from around the iMac frame. It's very important to make sure we remove all of the seals from around both the iMac frame and the screen. The reason for this is because when we're putting the iMac and the screen back together, we will have to put a new seal in place. So we have to make sure the old one is fully removed to ensure we get a nice clean connection and so there will be no cracks in the screen when we put it back together.
Okay, so once we've removed the seal, we'll take a microfiber cloth and spray some alcohol onto it and we will wipe around the edge of the screen. The reason for this is to ensure we remove any adhesive particles which remain around the edge of the screen. Now this is very, very important because when we put the screen back on the iMac later on, we have to make sure that it is clean where the new seal needs to go. Um, otherwise, what could possibly happen is when you put the screen back on with the seal, if there are any particles uh, left around the edge of the screen or the iMac, this could cause the screen to crack. So in effect, what you're doing here is you're doing as much as you can to reduce the possibility of your screen cracking when you put it back onto the iMac. But with this type of operation, there is always that chance, but we're just reducing all or as much risk as we can. And so once again, we'll take the microfiber cloth, spray some more alcohol on there and work our way around the edge of the iMac to ensure that there are no adhesive particles uh, around the edge of the screen. Now that we've removed the seal from the uh, frame, we're going to actually remove the fan. Now this fan has got three screws around the edges and it's attached to the heatsink. First of all, we're going to unclip the fan. Then we're going to take our screwdriver and unscrew the three screws. So that's the one on the left. We'll do this one at the bottom. And there's going to be one more just at the top. But for this exercise, we're using a Torx screwdriver. There we go. We just removed the third one now. So that's all the screws removed for the fan. And now we remove it from the chassis. And there you have your fan removed. If we look just inside the heat sink, we'll see that there's a little bit of dust in there, but not too much, but that's something we can clean a little bit later when we're cleaning the fan and the rest of the chassis and panel. So now we're gonna take our screwdriver and we have nine screws, which we've got to remove from the base of the panel area. Then we need to remove all of these screws because then we will have access to removing the logic board, the speakers, and all the other components. It's useful to make sure that we're using a magnetic torque screwdriver because these screws are very, very small. And once they've been loosened, it makes it a lot easier to help pull them out. Sometimes you'll see 
we use our fingers to get them out, but sometimes we have to use the uh, magnet as well. Sometimes these uh, screws can be a little bit tricky, but a little bit of perseverance uh, will be able to get them all out and uh, remove the little strip at the bottom, which is holding the rest of the components in place. So there we go, we just pull the strip out. And now we have access to the rest of the boards inside the panel. So now we're gonna remove the two speakers. Um, first of all, we have to just uh, disconnect it from the board just there. And then we also have uh, uh, another connector there, which we also just have to disconnect so that we don't damage anything when we're removing the board. And then we have uh, two more screws to remove also. Once again, they're using the Torx fitting. So we just unscrew the second one there. And now we can just gently make sure there's nothing attached to the side of the speaker there and just gradually apply some pressure and ease it out and just make sure it's not sticking to the uh, cable, it's not sticking to the board so it doesn't get damaged there. There we go, so that's the first speaker removed. And then we have the second speaker on the other side. Now there's a little cable along the side of the speaker there um, and that runs to where the uh, power button is. So we just have to make sure we disconnect that cable first because we don't want to damage that when we're removing the speaker. And we just peel it off gently just so it's not going to be trapped when we remove the speaker. And that leads to where the power button is. Let's unscrew the first screw. And the second screw just there. Now there is another cable just along the uh, top of the hard drive, which we're also gonna need to remove once we've just removed the power cable from the bottom. Just next to the hard drive there, we just disconnect that and pull that around the hard drive just so it doesn't get damaged when we're taking out the speaker. So we just pull that out, there we go. And we've removed the second speaker. That is the power cable. Now we're going to remove the hard drive remove these two screws. These were previously hidden by the speaker where they were covered over. Uh, but now we just remove the uh, second one. With those removed, we can lift up the hard drive and we'll just disconnect it there at the front. And that's it, there we have it out. So now we're gonna remove the power supply. To do that first, we're gonna disconnect the connector here. It's plugged onto the board and also to the power supply. And it's attached with adhesive. So we'll just unstick it and pull it up just to remove it. There we go. Now that's off, there's four screws we have to remove from the power supply. And there's two scr short screws at the base and two long screws at the top. So let's just take out this long screw here. And 
and we have a second one over this side. We're going to remove that also. And then we have the final short screw just towards the base. So now that that's removed, we'll gently pull up the power supply and there's a connector just underneath here. So we need to push under and release that. There we go. And then we also have a second connector connecting to the board. So we'll pull that out also. There we go, power supply removed. Now we're gonna remove the logic board. First, we disconnect the Wi-Fi cables. Now it's important to note which order these are in. So when we reconnect later, we connect them back to the right position. And then we have the webcam to remove. So we disconnect that cable now. There we go, we just peel that off and pull it out just there. So that's all the cables removed from around the board. So now we will work our way around the edge of the logic board, removing the screws. So we just take our time moving our way around the board unscrewing each of the screws around the edges. So there we have it. So we're just gonna thread the uh, hard drive cable through under here. And just peel it off. There we go. And you see there's a little screw just under here which we're gonna remove now. got another screw also on this side which we'll have to remove let's unscrew that and we've got a screw just in this hole down here so we're going to just extend the screwdriver a little and put an extension on it and then we're going to go down into the hole and unscrew this screw. Now this screw, it's not a detachable screw. Uh, so once you've fully screwed it out, you'll hear a little click, so you'll know that it's actually released from its connection. Then we have this tall screw here, which we're gonna remove. There we go. And now we should be able to just ease out the logic board. There we have it. That's our logic board removed. Now let's just take the vacuum cleaner and the uh, paintbrush and we're just gonna clean any dust particles or any particles from inside the panel. And we're just gonna take our paintbrush and brush out underneath the bottom part of the panel area just to clear out any dust that might have gathered in there and also around the back of the inside of the panel as well and we just work our way around just making sure it's as clean as possible and all prepared and prepped for when we put the board back in place and the panel back on Now let's move the logic board into place so we can clean the heat sink and the logic board. We're gonna take our vacuum cleaner hose and our brush and just gradually work our way across the heat sink, clearing out all the dust particles.
bearing in mind the iMac hasn't been open since it was first created so this is a good opportunity just to make sure all the parts are clean. So there we have it. The heatsink and the logic board is uh, clean from dust and we're just now uh, open up the fan so we can clean that also. Now there's uh, clips along the edge of the fan. We're just taking this flat head screwdriver and we're just going to push and clip each of these clip fasteners open and work our way around the fan so we can get inside and clean that also. So just applying a little bit of pressure on the clip just to release it. There we have it, we can open up the fan now. And you see just inside there, you might not be able to see it too clearly, but there is some dust inside the fan. So we just take off the top section. And we'll take our vacuum cleaner nozzle again, and our brush. And we just uh, gradually work our way around and clean the fan. Let's be as far as we can because once the uh, Mac is back together, it's probably not going to be taken apart again. So let's just clean it while we've got it open. And we'll turn it over and start cleaning the other side as well. And there we have it, so that's our fan main area cleaned and we just clean inside the fan panel in the casing. There we go. So now we've cleaned our fan and inside the casing and we're just going to put a little bit of the lubricant on there just so that we can put the fan back in place and it's ready to go. So we'll just place that on top there. And then we'll close the casing. And then we'll work our way around the edge of the fan just fastening each of the clips back in place. Each of them should just click in so you know when they're fully in place. Just making sure. And 
there we have it. Clean fan, back together. So whilst we have the logic board out, we're going to uh, change over the battery. If we just uh, put the screwdriver under the battery and just push it, we can just raise it up and it should just pop out for us. There we go. And we're going to take a multimeter and we're just going to show you what the current voltage is on the battery which has been in the iMac since it was manufactured you can see that's 2.9 and we're going to replace that with a new battery and the voltage on the new battery is about 3.3 there we go so we're going to put the new battery in place on the logic board and we just push that in and clip that in place there we go so now we've got our ssd and we're going to place this in the mvme socket on the logic board but the uh, groove is just a little bit out of place so we can't connect it straight in so we're going to take an adapter and connect that to the end of the ssd once we've put that in place the adapter will fit onto the socket and we just click that in place we just apply a little bit of pressure and then we go we click that in now you'll know that's fully in place once the end of the ssd lines up with the screw hole on the board we'll take a screw just to finalize and secure the ssd in place And there we have our SSD fitted. As you can see, the hard drive cable is still attached to the logic board. So if we just uh, unclip that and pull that out, there we go. It's always best to remove those parts which are not required so they don't cause any faults later on or any error messages to occur on the logic board. So now we're going to start our reassembly process and we're going to start by putting the logic board back in place first. So we we'll just slot it straight back in from the place where we took it. And just make sure all the cables are out of the way. And we're screwing the top connectors just to fasten it in place. Then we we'll take the power supply. I'm going to take a bit of alcohol and just spray it on some of the connectors here. It's just because it's been out of the casing and we want to make sure there's no dust on there. So we just spray a bit of alcohol just to make sure the connectors are clean. And we just take our time and move out any of the cables which we disconnected so we can reconnect them to the power supply as we put it back in place. Just clip that on there and then slide it underneath the base. And we clip the side cable on here. And just put our power supply in position. There we go. And we just take a couple of screws just to hold it in place while we're putting the rest of the components in. So I'm just spraying a little bit more alcohol along some of the connectors because we've got to connect all of these cables back into the logic board. On this side, we're just putting those Wi-Fi aerial cables back in. And then we will take the speakers and put those back in also. So first we'll take this right side here. 
and we just slide it into place and we just make sure that the cables are neatly tucked in around the side there and just uh, push that down there we go we just take our time and then we'll retrace the cable around the power supply back to the logic board as you can see the second speaker has now gone in and now we we'll reconnect the fan just placing that against the heat sink and slide that in there again we'll spray a little bit of alcohol just to make sure the connections clean And now we've got to reconnect the cable which is attached to the power supply and the logic board. So there we have it. That's all our components back in place. So now we're gonna put the screws back in around the edge of the logic board. Let's just screw those into place. Then we have to put our strip back in the base of the casing. Remember earlier on we took out nine screws, so we're gonna to have to put those nine screws back in place. Okay, so that's all the components secure. Now that's done, we're gonna replace the seals. Now these seals go all around the edge of the casing. And if you just line them up with the holes, you'll get them in position. And then you can take off the sticky tab. And then we just stick them down. Now, if you remember earlier, we took a lot of time to prepare the edge of the casings for when we replace the seal. Now that was a very important task because when we're putting the seal down we don't want no dust particles or anything down there to disturb the positioning of the seal. Uh, but now it is clean so we can uh, place the seal all the way around the edge of the casing. So we'll continue to place the seals around the edge and once again, we align up the hole just so we get the seal in its correct position. We'll take off the sticky tack and then we'll place the seal down along the edge of the screen casing. And there we go. We just uh, rub our finger along there and just make sure it's securely in place. sticky tap and there we go and we continue this exercise all the way around the edge of the casing so we just take our time and make sure we get it right once again lining up the end of the seal strip 
with the hole. And again, lining it up and gently placing it in position. And we'll pull off this side and just place it gently down. It's good to make sure you've got steady hands and a keen eye. And once again, align up the hole. Place this first section. And stick it down towards the end. Peeling off there and lining that up and securing that in place there we have it nicely done just making sure that it's all the way sealed all the way round and then we'll take our bottom strip And that will go in place just over those nine screws, which we replaced earlier. Again, you'll see we're taking our time to just line it up. Make sure we know exactly where we're gonna place it. And then gradually stick it into place. And then we have one more. And again, we just gradually work our finger along there and just make sure that's neatly put into position And there we have it. We're going to take the alcohol and spray the screen connectors just to make sure they're clean. Now we'll take the tabs in the center of the bottom adhesive strip and peel them back to reveal the adhesive strip. So now we're going to take the screen and gently reposition it so that it is placed neatly on the adhesive strip. Now this can be quite a tricky exercise, so we're just gonna take our time and line the screen up perfectly. As you can see, we didn't put it in place first time, we just gradually 
and moving it to its right position, lining it up, and sometimes it touches the adhesive as we try to place it, so we just have to lift it up again and just reposition it so it's in exactly the right position. And then once it's in, we just place it down and we use the clamp to help us apply some pressure just so we can make sure it's nice and snug. And we just lift it up a little bit, apply a little bit more pressure Make sure the seal is nice and tight. And once we're happy with that, we reconnect the screen. And we take the cable just under here and push it back into place. There we go. And then we place it closed. And so now the screen is uh, ready for testing. So now we're gonna take our USB and we've got a number of apps installed on our USBs or a number of pieces of software anyway. Um, we're gonna plug that into the back of the Mac and we're gonna install uh, Catalina uh, onto the Mac. And we're just gonna plug in our keyboard also. So our Mac will just be uh, starting up. Probably a good idea to remove the clamps so you can see what's going on on the screen at the moment. And as you can see, it's picked up our new SSD and also the operating system on the USB. So what we're going to do is we're going to boot it into the USB and we'll wipe off the hard drive because there were some previous things installed on there and do a fresh install. Now let's take a look at the SSD we've installed. So here we see that the Mac has now picked up the 500 gigabyte SSD. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna erase it, uh, format it, uh, set it up so it's ready for the install of the new operating system. So we're just gonna name it a 500 gigabyte SSD drive. There we go. And now that's done, we're gonna open up the terminal and set the date and time. If you recall earlier, we took out the old battery and installed a new battery. So, uh, the system would have been reset and so now what we're going to do is we're going to set the date and time now this is actually done in american format so we're just typing our date right here Once that's done, we just remember to put date at the front. And there we have it, the system date and time has now been set. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna install the operating system. And we're gonna install it onto the 500 gigabyte SSD which we've put in the Mac and we just opened up a log there so that we can watch the install and just in case if there's any errors that come up we can actually 
look at the log and see at which point the error occurred and then we can troubleshoot what the problem is. So this install should take around about 20 minutes or so. So we just leave that to run. So now we're going to do the first time setup. So we're going to select uh, UK as our location. Um, we're not actually going to uh, set up the Wi-Fi right now. Uh, this because because this can sometimes cause uh, some issues. So we're just going to uh, skip the Wi-Fi and we set that up later. It can sometimes take a couple of minutes to find the Wi-Fi. So we'll go through and select uh, data privacy policy. And we read our terms and conditions. And accept those. And then we set up a username and password for the account. We just put a basic password word on there right now. And we just keep going through the express setup. And we're not going to share any analytics or crash information, so we just uh, skip through that. As we work our way through the setup options, uh, we just select the relevant things that we need right now. And then we finally we get to our theme and we select this one. And the Mac's just gonna do some checks to make sure everything is running all right and then it should log in. There we go. And now we're up and running. So now let's uh, start up the Mac for the first time with the install. So this is the first time the uh, new hard drive has been uh, set up and opened with the new operating system. So what we're going to do now is the speed test. If you remember previously from the beginning of the video, uh, we done a speed test with the Black Magic app and we're just going to drag that onto the desktop. Let's open that up and give that a run and see the difference from where we were at the beginning of the video before we upgraded the hard drive. So there you have a speed of 725 MB per second on the right side. And on the read, we have a speed of approximately 770 MB per second. Now, if you compare that to where we were prior to installing the 500 gigabyte SSD. We had a write speed previously of 180 to 183 MB per second. And we had a read speed of also 180 to 184 MB per second. So with the new hard drive installed and the old one terabyte, three and a half inch SATA removed, we have quadrupled the speed of the write and the read on this hard drive, which means we have a much more efficient and much faster hard drive for running our applications. So now we're going to just uh, open the uh, hardware monitor. And 
in this area what we're going to do is we're just going to have a look and just make sure the various parts of the system are running how they should be as you work your way down the list you can just check to make sure everything's running at its nominal speed and check to make sure the temperature is all right Okay, so now let's uh, connect to the, the Wi-Fi. We just type in our password there and we can see that our Wi-Fi indicator is activating. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use uh, Siri to test the volume and the Wi-Fi at the same like time. And we're just going to ask Siri, what is the weather like in Derby? And there we have Siri's response, 18 degrees. So it's picked up the mic volume and it's checked over the Wi-Fi. So we know that that is now operating. And we just take the tape off the top here and we'll make sure the webcam is also active. There we go. We can see that's up and operational. Let's just put the tape back over there. And then we're going to do a Bluetooth check to make sure the Bluetooth adapter is working. So let's just scan and sync it with our phone. Give it a couple of seconds. And there we go. It's picked up the Bluetooth. So now we can see that the Bluetooth adapter is working. So we have the Bluetooth working, the Wi-Fi working, the mic working, and also the webcam working. So all of those major components are set up and operational. So now that's done, uh, we can test the USB slots behind the back of the Mac. And we're just gonna use the mouse here we're gonna plug it in to each of the slots one by one and just make sure the USB ports are all working. So now that's done, it's time to place the screen back on the iMac and we're just peeling away this tape from the top of the adhesive strips. We'll work our way all the way around, being sure to have a good firm hold of the screen. And then we gradually just push it down and place it. So we've just released the uh, suction on the clamp a little and we're just going to apply a little, little bit of pressure not too much just to ensure that the seal fitting against the screen So there we have it, the screen has now been replaced. So now if we go behind the back of the Mac, you see the little button there. Uh, we're gonna press that to release the panel on the back so we can have access to the memory area. And we're just gonna unclip the edges there and release that so that comes down. And we're gonna upgrade the memory. So we're gonna put an extra two or three memory cards in there to give us an upgrade. We just slot that right in there. And there's our second memory card. And our third one as well. So we originally had one and we now have got three. 
So let's just close that back. We're putting the panel back into place. Just clip that in there. So there we have it. We've had the upgrade from the one terabyte, three and a half inch SATA to the 500 gigabyte SSD. We also added some extra memory into the iMac. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you've got any questions, queries, or any other upgrades that you'd like to see, uh, leave your comments or send us a message or an email. We'll definitely take a look and see what we can come back with. Special thanks to UKSL Mac Lab in Derby for allowing us to film this upgrade of the iMac. We hope you guys out there have enjoyed watching this. If you've got any questions, queries or comments, then please leave them below or get in contact with us. Uh, UKSL Mac Lab are available to provide this service to you. So should you not have the uh, confidence to do this at home, uh, then definitely uh, contact UKSL Mac Lab in Derby. Uh, the links are below in the description and uh, they'll be happy to help you or assist you to do this work. Thanks for watching and stay tuned and please do subscribe for our future videos.